Well, welcome everybody to Race of Grace Fellowship, to those who are out on the, uh, viewing us live over the internet. We want to welcome you this morning. It's Father's Day 2018. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Hallelujah. I posted on Facebook this morning uh, something that's very true, that any male, any male can, uh, can uh, uh, have a child, but it takes a real man to stand up to the challenge of fatherhood. It takes a real man to stand up to the challenge of fatherhood. There might be many, uh, many, many uh, people out there that have um, that stood up to the challenge to be a father. Do we see that in today's society? It's a sad thing that many, uh, many uh, women out there raising children on their own without. Uh, 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 a father figure in their life, a father in their life, it's nothing against you at all. But we need to stand up and to be fathers, to be real and be a true father and raise their children in the admonition of the Lord fear and admonition of the Lord that this Hallelujah. We'll try that. But in the meantime, we talked about the courts of heaven. We talked about that God, the Father, puts his gavel down and says, not guilty because of Jesus Christ. We talked about being free from sin, free from uh, the uh, shortcomings and everything in our lives. It's not part of our nature anymore. As we talked about that the Spirit of God is inside of us, wanting to live through us, changing us more into the likeness and image of God, that old hymn, that Jesus on the inside, working on the outside, oh, what a change in my life. And that's the truth. Oh, what a change, because he's changing us from the inside out. Not uh, anywhere else, uh, any, uh, not on the outside first. See, anybody can preach a clothesline doctrine saying you got to wear this and wear that. You got to have your hair a certain way. But if your heart's not changed,
sometimes we, we, we uh, look on the external things and we don't take control over our emotions and we don't take them. Jesus, we worship you this morning in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glorify you, Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God, in everything that we, we, we say and everything that we do. Now, Lord, and with your word, God, this morning, with your word this morning, Lord God, I just ask you to breathe upon it, Lord God. Open our hearts that we might receive your word, Lord God, this morning. As it's coming forth, Lord God. Jesus, 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 we love you. We love you, we love you, we love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glorify you, Lord. Jesus' name, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. We talked about, like I said, the past few weeks, of starting with Romans chapter 8. We've been talking about Romans chapter 8, and it's such a fascinating chapter of the Bible. One of my favorite chapters. Uh, I would say you're allowed to have one one more than one favorite chapter of the Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. But Romans chapter 8, it's such a, 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 a rather, chapter 5 through 8 is such a awesome, awesome passage of Scripture that it explains who we are in Christ and who He is in us. Hallelujah. And what He has done to us and for us on the cross. It's so awesome that He not only did things to, for us, but He done things to us. He's changed your very way in which you live and act because of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit inside of you. Desiring to, to manifest in your life. In my life. So that He can permeate the very essence of all of our hearts and emotions and our will, and our, our minds, our thoughts, and come out, and, and the way we, we act, and the way we speak. He desires for you and I to be filled with Holy Spirit, and with Holy Spirit and fire, and with the Word. If you don't put the Word inside of you, guess what? It ain't going to come out. What you put inside of you will manifest. What you feed on, what you eat. I know I'm not talking about physical food here. I'm talking about what you digest through your eyes through your ears, in your thought life, what you digest. David said, lift up ye gates. We're supposed to lift what gates? Our eyes, our gates, our our, our Things. We're supposed to lift them up to the Lord. In fact, David, even though he, when he looked at Bathsheba, after that, we see him writing and praying a whole lot of stuff. Psalm 101 is a, 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 an excellent chapter that I brought out before.
says things like, I will not set any wicked thing before, perverse thing before my eyes. I will not look at another person with lust in my eyes. A forward and perverse heart, a wicked heart, will be far away from me. And he's declaring these things to the Lord. He's lifting up his gates before the Lord and saying, these things will not be a part of me no more. And he lifts this stuff up as a worship to the Lord. We see that many of the psalms, you know, were sung. David was a psalmist. David was a minstrel. Did you know David played the harp, remember? Vroom, vroom. And it's said that in Hebraic culture, it is said by them that David played in, in an unnatural key to the natural ear. Natural ear, rather. He played in a different key. The key that was uh, just designed in it, it the sound of heaven. And if you were to hear it probably today, you would say, man, they're playing out of, they're out of tune. But David was in tune to a different, different orchestra. The sound of heaven. Beloved, perhaps the sound of heaven is different than the sound coming from the earth. Perhaps that we're so, we're so attuned and adjust to uh, uh, listen and say, man, this is the sound that it should sound like because this is what the sound of all society is listening to. And what if it is d just the fact that we are listening and we're judging things the wrong way? But we're because we're accustomed to listen to the corrupt sound. That has been subtly changed in such a way that is different to the sound of heaven. Different from the kingdom. He goes on here to say about not, not doing things out of religious duty. Religious obligation. It's like having a religious spirit. And many people come around and say all these different names or different demons or different spirits people have. But I believe that these assignments are sent to, to you know, hey, go ahead and do this and, and, and whisper, go, go, go bother them about this, the enemy would say. You know, in their hierarchy, so to speak, as the Bible puts out. Cause them to want to like the status quo. To do things out of obligation. Worship God out of ceremony only. And that's how we can become sometimes. I like on Friday nights... Uh, Reverend Glenn Lester puts out, and, and, and it's so true, and I, I've said the same thing many a times, that the things that we sing, do we really mean it? There are songs like, I'll go anywhere for you as long as it is just here with me and you. 
nowhere else. Don't you dare call me to go to uh, uh, move down south to start a church. Don't you dare call me to go to Africa because I won't go there. But I'll do anything for you. Go anywhere for you. And we sing these things. Or, 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 I love you, Lord. And this song better not go too long because I have my ham in the oven and it's about to burn. There's a worship period. I think it's so funny, but it, it is a sad thing that is so true. They sing songs and it's a parody about how people worship. I just worship singing the songs, lip service, but no, your heart is not in it. It's like the Word of God says, people have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. What power? People say, oh, the power of God and healing people and speaking and prophesying to people. That's not it. You know what the number one power of God is, is talking about there? The change of your life. I'm going to say something that is totally... <laughs> Some people might say, oh my gosh, he's a heretic. As a Pentecostal. You know, God is more interested in seeing your heart changed and transformed and you be brought to maturity than you do ministry. You evangelize. And you uh, prophesying, you laying hands on the sick. He even said that in 1 Corinthians 14. After uh, 12, which is the gifts of the people. Oh yeah, the gifts of the Spirit. I wish we had more of them in the church. Oh, but nobody misses, everybody misses chapter 13, which is the whole uh, concept of why the gifts move and flow in the first place. It's love. It's, it's love manifesting in your heart. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1, it says, it says, Oh, guys and girls, I want you to go and, and pursue with all your heart the gifts of prophecy, the gift of prophecy. I want you to, pro the gifts, I want you to just go after it with all your heart. And that's it. No. The very first thing is says pursue love, go after love, Chase after love, the love of God in your heart. You know what the love of God is? You want the love of God in your heart? Pursue Jesus. Pursue Jesus. He's the giver of the gifts. Many people get the horse before the cart, right? Is that how the saying goes, the horse before the cart? The cart, be the cart before the horse, rather. You look through history and all the men and women of God, the, of great revivals, what preceded that and what continued through them is a heart that was following hard after the Lord himself. And they were manifesting the love of God in their hearts. And that's how the gifts are man uh, come through a person. Clearly and cleanly. 
not perverted. We don't need perversion. We don't need uh, corruption. We need purity. We need integrity. We need the love of God to come manifest in us and through us. Holy Spirit, fruit, which is love, that is manifest through joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, temperance. There, against such there is no law. Galatians chapter 5, in other words. These things manifest are flourishing, they produce fruit. In order things to produce fruit, a fruit tree, it's got to have a few things, doesn't it? Now, I don't have a green thumb, like the saying is. Unfortunately, uh, very few things that I plant succeed. I planted some bushes of flowers and stuff on it and it's supposed to come up every year and it died. I say, like, what happened to them? They're coming up this year. Oh, well, they're not there. They didn't make it. But there's some things that, that will, will help it to grow. You gotta have, it, it's got to have nutrients. It's got to have food. Got to have water. That sunlight coming down on it. That's how it turns stuff into food. We're going to have a science lesson today. And if it doesn't get that, guess what's going to happen? It's going to dry up. It's going to die. It won't produce any fruit. And that's the same in our life. We got to have times of refreshing in of the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. We got to have the Word as a, 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 a spiritual nourishment. What happens if you don't eat in a period of time? You'll die. What happens if you don't have water or hydration over a certain period of time? You die. If that's the case, how come we don't... We take care of our, our natural bodies and we neglect our spirit, our spiritual state, We need more of the Word. We need more of the God of the Word. We need more of Holy Spirit.
certain times, you know, we're, 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 cursing, we're cursing the devil. We're, 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 we're giving the devil a little bit of right now. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hmm. Yes, okay. What if? What if God is allowing the devil to come at you and is the one using, using the devil for, for your to be the agent of change in your heart. Uh-oh. He's a big God. Sometimes you're like,
seven months ago that I had fallen and my one knee stayed in place and, and my one leg stayed in place and the other knee went out, leg went out. And, and it was like one of those athletic injuries that you see on TV where the leg just goes the other way. And all through this, I, I, I was not, I'm not really praying, even though I'm believing God for healing, and he, it is coming. And you are to believe God for healing, divine healing. But that is, wasn't my, or is not my concern. Even through the pain, even through the suffering, we at times forget we want to get to the other side quickly. Yes, it hurts. We want to get out of it. Who wants to have a knee problem? Not, I don't think anybody. A torn PCL and MCL and meniscus. Bruised my bones. In three months, I'll have to have uh, surgery, which they will actually go in and clean up everything. So, through this whole process, I'm like, God, I'm just satisfied with you. Get more to my heart. What can you learn through the stuff that you're going through right now? So many times we're, we're looking helter-skelter, pulling our hair out like Chicken Little. Oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, oh my God, the sky is falling. That we're not seeking God. Our ears are attuned to the doctors, the voice of our friends, the voice of our family, the voice of the, uh, of the, the Google, the Internet, and, and WebMD and all kinds of MDs. And ABC, EDFG. That we're not tuned into God, we can't hear Him no more. What is He saying to you? Have you tuned God out in your circumstance? Have you tuned God out on what you're doing? Are you listening too much to the voice of the so-called experts, the doctors and the lawyers and everything else that you can't, you can't hear God anymore? See, the biggest voice that, that speaks against us is not the devil, it rather, it's not the world or anything else. It's the voice of self. I don't have the devil come at me sometimes in the mornings and stuff. I don't have to have anybody else. I don't have to have the experts or anything else. I can be my own worst critic at times. You can be your own worst critic at times. And you can speak to self-doubt. You can look in the mirror and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have this knee brace on, well, you know, ho, oh, oh. well, ho, me, or I'm in the wheelchair, or I need to use a cane or a walker. And your heart begins to sink because you listen to self and listen to everybody else, but you don't listen to God and you don't give Him praise in the midst of the circumstances you're going through. As, as, as we, uh, I brought out during worship. Worship is our warfare. Praise is our weapon. 
Worship is your warfare. Praise is your weapon. Take your mind, take your eyes, take your, everything off your circumstance and begin to give him praise. Begin to thank him. Begin to worship him. Begin to love him. With everything. All that you are. The entire universe, verse 10, is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's glorious sons and daughters. For against its will, the universe itself had to endure the empty futility resulting from the consequence of human sin. But now with eager expectation, all creation longs for freedom from its slavery to decay and the experience with, uh, an experience to experience with us the wonderful freedom coming to God's children. To this day we are all are aware of the universal agony and groaning of creation as it, if it were in the uh, concentra- contractions of labor for birth, uh, childbirth rather. And it is not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruit of the Spirit are inwardly grown as we passionately long to experience our full status us God's sons and daughters, including our physical body, being transformed. How many can't wait for that to happen? Amen? Our bodies transformed in a, in a twinkling of an eye. Whoop. New bodies. New place. Hallelujah. For this is the hope of our salvation. But hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. For why would the world need to hope for something that we already have? You have this hope in you. Hope of what? Hope uh, that, that we're going to go with to be with him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. To be with him face to face. To have it transformed, to be transformed into something new. Something we look forward to. But it also says that there is coming, all creation is longing for the manifestation. That means physical, manif- mean, man- tangible presence of Jesus in and through the lives of the church, you and I. They're waiting, they're longing. And it's something that we have to cultivate in our lives. Even though he has has already purchased everything, like we brought out before, there might be some blockades or some, uh, uh, some things that we need breakthrough in. The word breakthrough, uh, by, by, by definition, could be uh, breaking through a barrier. Getting through a barrier or obstacle that stands in the way. And the obstacles and barriers are more, not, uh, more likely not on the outside, but the barriers are inside of our hearts and lives that we have to let go of. Because the barriers, the breakthrough is not on God's side because God already paid for in, in full on the cross everything. That's why Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 1 that he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's given you all things that pertain to a living a godly life, living life abundantly. Yeah, I'm not doing that now, but how about the 
blockages in our own heart and life that we have not given up. What about it? Breakthrough is what we do in order to lay down and surrender everything so that we might experience what God has already done to set us free. Hallelujah. In a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. Holy Spirit empowers us in our weakness, in our frailty. Oh God, I can't do it. I can't make it today. I says, yes, you can. Holy Spirit whispers to you and empowers you. Said, yes, you can. I'm empowered to it. Then I say my word. <laughs> Philippians 4.13. What does it say? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know what he's saying? You can do all things through me. Who strengthens you? It does not say you might be able to do it. He says you can and you will. That's a declaration to your life. Hallelujah. God. Let's go back up. Verse 26. For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or how, know the best things to ask for, but the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. God, the searcher of our heart, knows fully our longings. Yet he also understands the desire of the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. Holy Spirit inside of us knows us, knows what he's God. He knows the deep things that are hidden in our life, what we need to get rid of, and he's pleading with God, God. Uh, they're, they're awesome because what Jesus you got Holy Spirit on our side not only Holy Spirit you got Jesus remind Father as well hey well, guess what I, I, I did everything for them remember you know do, do you see these nails in my hand my feet Spirit, there's a hole on my side. My blood covers them. We got Holy Spirit. We got Jesus. They're, they're all rooting for us. They all are, are, are pulling for us. Saying, you can make it, you can go at the distance. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are His excuse me, lovers who have been called to fulfill His design purpose. You are called to fulfill His purposes for, his, for your life. And the first purpose, the first thing that you and I were designed to do is glorify God and enjoy Him forever.
Our first ministry, if you want to call it that, is Jesus. The f- work is in our hearts, allowing a Holy Spirit to search things in our lives and say, you know what, isn't it time for you to give this thing over to me? And he's saying, you know what, you could do it. You could be free. Every detail. Everything about your life. It says, verse 29, He knew us all before we were born, and He destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of His Son. This means the Son is the oldest mo- among the most, uh, 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 the vast, family of brothers and sisters who will become just like him. That's where we're headed. To become more like Jesus. His character. His countenance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, He called us to Himself and transformed His perfect righteousness to everyone He called. And those who possess His perfect righteousness, He co-glorified with His Son. (laughs) That's how He sees you and I already glorified with Him. Already a finished product. (coughs) Excuse me. Co. Joint heirs. That means co. That means we were co crucified with him, we were co buried with him. Co-resurrected with Him. Co-reigning and ruling with Him. He ascended. He sees us already glorified. He sees us as perfect. He sees you and I as perfect. He sees you and I as finished. All done. Don't have to do anything else. He sees us that way. And he writes the stuff to remind us that. He reminds he shows us what we what we are. Did you know God stands outside of time? He does that throughout the word. He shares stuff about our future. So it will pull us out of our disgusting now and our past. (laughs) I like what the late, uh, just just escaped my mind. I got to think about it. (laughs) Late prophet. He used to say somewhere in the future it looks better, much better than it does right now. Your future looks much better than it does right now. And he writes things and he shows us things that, that just about who we will be and what we are. To pull us out of our past. To get us through our now. And it's just like Ananias when he was 
told by God that about Saul of Tarsus. He shows that he said, Ananias in cha- Acts chapter, I believe it was chapter nine. He said, Ananias, I want you to go to a, a house on Straight Street, and I want you to lay hands on a man named Saul, that he will receive his sight, and you, you'd be taught many things and and, the, and stuff of that nature. And, and Ananias begin to think about it. it's like that's the same Saul that's going to killing people, killing Christians. says, no, Ananias, go. And, and, and he, he shows that once again, Saul, I mean Ananias, as a miracle worker. Right then, Ananias was full of fear and doubt, worry, and wonder. But God shows Ananias' future when he was at Straight Street already in Damascus. And he always showed Saul laying, I mean, him laying hands on Saul, I believe. And in that instance, it, it brought him out of the fear of the present and caused him to walk into his de- the, the, the destiny and go to that straight street place in Damascus and lay hands on Saul, and his eyes were opened up. God showed Ananias that he was a miracle worker. At the, uh, 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 indeed, he was a man full of fear. He showed Ananias his destiny. That pulled him out of his current situation and caused him to walk in destiny in his future. <laughs> Hallelujah. Your future, somewhere in the future, it looks much better than it does right now. And it does. Your now may be bleak. You might be full of pain. Seek the God of the Word and the Word of God and the Holy Spirit to be filled up to overflowing. Continue to have a heart that's laid down upon the altar. Day by day and moment by moment if necessary. Moment by moment. Let's finish up in verse 30. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. And next week we're going to take up with verse 31. It says, so what does this all mean? What does it all mean? What we just read before, what does it all mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who then could ever stand against us? For God has proved his love by giving us his greatest treasure, the gift of a son. And since God freely offered him up as the sacrifice for us all, He certainly won't withstand from us anything else he has to give. If God has done all this, he sees you as glorified. He is is invested, in other words, everything in you. He has invested everything in us. If that be the case, and God's saying this is the case, this is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help myself. That's what God's saying. 
Not me. <laughs> this be the case. What does it mean? He's saying, if I be before you, if I am with you, if I'm filling you up, if I invested all that I am in you, who is able to come against you? No one. No one. No one. There ain't no force in hell. There ain't no force in the universe that can stand against you because all that has in you. He has a awesome investment. His own, his son gave it all. Oh, wow. What an awesome price. Unfathomable amount of investment that he has in you and me. And he's not going to quit. <laughs> never has and he never will. He never will give up on you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because of the investment he has in us. So praise God. Heavenly Father, I thank you of your great investment that you have in, in us, in me. You invested everything. Lord God, Cause that revelation to become reality in our lives. That we might see it and we might come alive in our hearts and lives. That the great investment, just everything that you have paid, everything, invested everything in us. And in that, God, if, if you're for us, who can be against us? Oh, Lord. You have invested everything. And that's why you see us as glorified. And we honor you this morning. We honor you this morning. Jesus, I thank you for your word. Apply your word to our lives that we might walk it out every single day, Lord God. And it might bring us more into your likeness, in your image, Lord God, that we might grow up. <laughs> You're designing fathers and mothers in the faith. We thank you, Father. Lord, I pray a, pray a blessing on everyone here. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and grant you His peace. Shalom. Nothing broken, nothing lacking. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, and everyone said, Amen and Amen. Be blessed. Happy Father's Day to all you fathers. Amen.